Would you be the jerk for shaming your brother for announcing that his wife was in labor at your wedding? We'll get to that in a bit, but first, am I the jerk for giving away an expensive KitchenAid stand mixer my dad got me for my birthday that I thought looked extremely ugly? Background, for my 24th birthday, my dad got me a gray metal KitchenAid stand mixer for my apartment. It was about $700, I think. However, I did not ask for this. And honestly, I freaking hate the color as it doesn't match anything in my place and it's also too big. I gave it to my friend who liked it and was moving to a different state. My boyfriend then got me a cute black stand mixer that fit into my apartment a lot better, so that's what I have. My dad was over last night and he noticed that the gray stand mixer was gone and replaced by the black one. He asked where it was and I told him the truth. Namely, that I thought the gray was ugly, so I gave it to my friend, and my boyfriend got me the black one instead. My dad was shocked and said the gray stand mixer cost a lot and that he thought I would have liked it, so that's why he gave it to me as a present. Maybe here's where I'm the jerk. I said if he would have been more observant, he would have known that I absolutely hate the color gray. It's my least favorite color, and everyone in my life who knows me knows that. I honestly wasn't trying to be rude, I was just stating a fact. But my mom called me today and told me I really hurt my dad and need to apologize for throwing away a thoughtful birthday gift my dad had put a lot of money and thought into. I don't think that's necessary. I think after my dad gave me the stand mixer, it became mine and I could do anything with it. And I didn't throw it away, I gave it to a friend. So am I the jerk? Honestly, I think when a gift starts getting that expensive, you probably should offer to at least like give it back to the person who gave it, even if that seems shameful, rather than just giving it away. I mean, shoot, from the get-go, if it was a gift that they spent $700 on and you weren't really too happy with it, you should have spoken up and let them know, not ultimately let them feel like they wasted $700. Am I wrong? Also, hi, I'm Steven, and if you enjoy getting to decide whether or not all of these people are jerks, why not hit those like and subscribe buttons down below. That said, our next story is, am I the jerk for buying a PS5 for my daughter when my ex asked me not to? My ex and I have a 14-year-old daughter together. She also has two more kids who are 16-year-old male and 11-year-old female. We have 50-50 custody. Here's the problem. My daughter loves gaming. She's been begging her mom and I to buy her a PS5. I bought one for her a few weeks ago, but I didn't give it to her right away. I decided to wait until after an important and difficult exam that she had and give it to her as a prize for getting an A plus in that exam, which I knew she would. A few days ago, my ex called me and asked me not to buy a PS5 for my daughter, as apparently she's been gloating to her siblings and making them jealous because their parents are financially struggling and can't have as many privileges as my daughter. My ex gave me a long lecture about how she doesn't deserve another privilege because of her behavior. I told her I'll consider it, but I didn't promise anything. Well, she got her exam results a couple of days ago, and not only did she get an A+, she was the only A+, in her grade. I was extremely proud and decided that she deserves getting her new PS5 and gave it to her. Yesterday I took her to her mom's home, and a few minutes after I left, my ex called screaming at me asking why I did it when she specifically asked me not to do it. She thinks I'm a huge jerk for doing this, but I think as her dad, I should be able to decide what my daughter does or does not deserve, and my ex doesn't have the right to tell me what to do. So 100% I think OP's in the right here. It's great that not only are they buying these things for their kids, but they're also doing it at rather appropriate times and encouraging good grades and stuff. It sucks for those other kids and the other family that they can't afford something like that, but that doesn't mean that the daughter has to be deprived of everything equally. This isn't about the daughter getting one step ahead, this is more about them trying to intentionally hold her back to their level. I'd also say, in no circumstances can you allow her to bring it with her to her mom's house. Something is going to happen. Our next story is, am I the jerk for turning around and going home on my way to the airport for a girl's trip? I, 23 year old female, was supposed to go on a girl's weekend trip to Spain with my longtime friend of almost 10 years, 24 year old female, and her other female friend, 28 year old female, who I was excited to meet. We all live in Germany, but her and her friend live about three and a half hours away from me, and I live closer to Frankfurt. They decided that they wanted to drive through the night about 10 hours and arrive in the morning. 
and said that if I could meet them in their town, I could drive with them. I instead elected to just fly over and meet them there, since I live so close to an airport. The day before the trip, she texted me a link to book some tickets to a museum that her and her friend booked. She told me to book for 2pm, which is when they booked for. When I clicked the link, the only time slot available was 8.35am. I was pretty much like, whatever, I'll do something else while they're doing that. The night before the trip, I text her asking her how much I owed her for accommodations and whatever else that we're splitting. This is the second time I've asked her since her friend was the one doing the bookings and I just assumed I would send them my share when they told me how much it cost. She didn't answer, but I just assumed she was sleeping to prepare for the long drive. The morning of my flight, three hours before my flight leaves, she tells me that I had to book my own hotel room because they're having a guy friend come with them that they invited last minute. She sent me a link so I could book at the same hotel as them for that night, but all the rooms were fully booked. I searched around the area too and all rooms were booked or very expensive. I really wanted to go so I just kind of let it go and prepared myself to spend some extra money for a hotel room for myself in a different hotel. But on the way to the airport, I had a gut feeling that I wasn't going to enjoy myself. So I turned around and went home and sent her a text saying I was going to sit this one out because I was expecting a girl's trip. She's being short with me now and thinks I'm being unreasonable. Am I the jerk? If this was definitely like a girl's trip thing, you wouldn't have become some last minute change and you wouldn't have been hung out to dry. They made sure that you cleared out all of this time to come over, spend some time with them and then also at the last second go, oh by the way I changed my mind a little bit so uh, good luck. I don't see how that's going to motivate anybody to go through with it. This next story is, am I the jerk for telling my sister she's going to lose her daughter over the grudge she keeps carrying? My sister Viv has a daughter named Serenity. I'll call her Sarah for the post. So when Sarah was seven, her dad passed away. Her dad walked out the door to work that morning and got into an accident, which cost him and two others their lives. Viv was shell-shocked. She and Sarah's dad were high school sweethearts who had Sarah the year after they finished college. Sarah and her dad were as close as could be, and his loss rocked her. About a year later, Viv met her current husband, Michael. A year after they started dating, they introduced Sarah and Michael's daughter, Mia, to each other. Sarah was nine at the time and asked her mom to not keep dating Michael and to not be Mia's stepmom. She told Viv she wanted her to herself and didn't want to be second choice to her. Viv, instead of showing concern that Sarah would feel that way, or even asked some questions about where this was coming from, called her selfish and told her she was a child who had no idea how the world worked and would not get to be selfish by denying another kid a mom. She also told her Michael was looking forward to being her stepdad and that she'd be better off having another dad and a sister for the first time. I remember at the time telling Viv that she had felt the very same way when our dad married our stepmom and we didn't even lose our mom to death she just left our lives. Viv was especially angry that our stepmom had two kids of their own and didn't want anything to do with them. She said she was a selfish little witch back then too and realizes now that they were the best thing to happen to us. Sarah's 16 now and she's in high school. Mia's in 15 and also in high school. The girls are not close. I think both still see themselves as only children and they're not claiming each other from what I know. Viv has held on to what Sarah said as a 9 year old girl who lost her dad and was scared to lose her mom and because she and Mia aren't close, she brings it up to her constantly and accuses her of trying to get her way by not embracing Mia. Michael, I've come to realize, just wanted someone to raise his daughter and is not really involved all that deeply in anything related to his marriage to Viv or being a parent to either girl, even Mia. Sarah told me, my husband and my mother-in-law who acts as another grandma to her, that she feels like her mom hates her and that she wishes she could move out. She told me that she can see now that Mia is more important to her and that unless she loves Mia and adopts her as a real sister, she'll never have her mom back. She also told me she wishes she had never said anything to Viv and how much it makes her wish her dad was still around. Viv didn't like how much time Sarah was spending with us confronted me and I told her she would lose her daughter if she doesn't get over this grudge and accept that her child just wanted to experience less change after such a big loss. Viv said I was ruining her family. She also called me a witch. Am I the jerk? 
OP's definitely not the jerk for being the only person here to take a step back and understand what Sarah's going through. It's so disappointing that their own mother cannot take a step back and try to imagine themselves in Sarah's position and understand just why that 9 year old was feeling the way they were. Especially when OP pointed out to them that the mom themselves experienced that exact line of behavior as a kid. You can't be the jerk for acknowledging the truth. Our next story is, am I the jerk for taking a nap and letting my wife take care of our baby by herself? Our baby is 5 weeks old, he doesn't sleep through the night yet, wife and I split up times to wake up and nurse him back to sleep. She's a stay at home mom while I work in retail from 8am to 4pm. Wife was feeling a bit sick, she had a cold the other day, so I offered to take care of our son for the night so she was able to sleep well and get better. We did just that. I woke up every time to take care of the baby during the night. The next morning I was wasted but still had to go to work. I managed it but was exhausted and desperately needed a nap. Usually when I come home I take over the baby duties and she'd been taking care of him alone the whole day but this time I was exhausted. So instead I took a quick shower and went to sleep. I slept for around one and a half hours and woke up when dinner was ready. She told me off for going napping instead of helping her. I explained how tired I was and she told me that I shouldn't have offered to do all the baby care the night before if I was going to be a crybaby the next day. She also said that she had to do all of the household work so she was exhausted as well. We did the splitting the baby care as usual that night too. She's upset still. I think she's been unfair because I meant to help her feel better when I offered to take over the night and it was obvious I was going to be tired the next day. I don't think I was a jerk here, but perhaps I was? I think it goes without saying that the best relationships are ones where you both can compensate for each other and help out wherever possible. I completely understand her saying that she's exhausted from watching the baby all day and doing household work too, but the fact remains that she still had a shift off, cold or not. OP hadn't. All I can say is, I'm usually not a very mean-spirited or crabby person, but when I am sleep-deprived, like legitimately sleep-deprived like I know I would in this situation, I think I'd probably be prone to being a little crabby, a little snippy, and honestly, I think both sides are kind of at that point. Our next story is, am I the jerk for telling my sister-in-law, I hope she learns how to shut up around her son's friends? I've been married to my husband for four years now. Sister-in-law and I have never had the best relationship. When I first met her and the rest of my in-laws, the first question she had for me is why did my parents pick such a terrible name for me? My name is Osan and my dad is French-American and both he and my mom loved nature names, so I got a French one. The name has never been such a big issue for anyone before and I never faced a rude comment like sister-in-laws before. My husband, then boyfriend, told her at the time that she was being rude and her parents told her to watch what she was saying. But my name has been a sticking point for her for years. She always asks what my parents were thinking or tells people I was bullied for my name when I wasn't. Recently, she started complaining about her son's friends having weird names. Hollis, Indy, Kyson, to name a few. Then last weekend, we were all gathered and she asked brother-in-law, husband and her brother, his wife, what they were going to name their first child. And sister-in-law made a point of saying, thank God it was a normal name unlike mine. I told her I hoped she'd learn to shut up about names around her son's friends since she can't seem to do it around me. Most people at the table laughed. Sister-in-law was pissed and her husband told me I was acting like she was a bully who'd do that to kids and it was unfair. That I'm an adult and should be able to handle it. Am I the jerk? No way did this guy say to your face, you're an adult, you should be able to handle it. Way to try to bully somebody into just being accepting of being made fun of because their name is different. Personally, when it comes to naming decisions for kids, I usually subscribe to the belief that relatively normal is probably the way to go. But I'm not going to run around making fun of people with different names, especially not one like Osan and especially not in front of them, I think you have to go a little too far with your naming decisions before it gets to that point, kind of like Elon Musk's baby's name. Our next story is, would I be the jerk if I blocked off access to my land that locals use to access trails? My husband and I recently bought and moved into a new house that has three acres of land. The land backs up to a river and is one of the main things that made us want to buy the house. 
At that closing, the previous owners let us know that some neighbors will cut through our land to access trails in the back. Not sure at that point whose land it is or if it's public, but they're walking through our yard for a good portion to get back there. Some people take their dogs multiple times a day, while others like to go four-wheeling back there. Technically not allowed and some people get fined. When they first said something, my initial reaction was that it wouldn't bother me at all and it's far enough out of view for me to not notice or care. The previous owner also told us that they're really respectful people who came to him before they moved and asked if they thought they could still use it once we moved in. They had this previous arrangement with him after he got upset and told them he'd block it off if they weren't considerate about when and how they accessed it. He rightfully told them he doesn't know and they'll have to introduce themselves to us and ask when we move in. So I've been expecting them to come by, but they haven't. However, I've already seen them multiple times cutting through our yard. It turns out, it bothers me more than I thought. I don't like that they didn't come ask, and it's much more in sight than I realized. When I look out my yard, I can clearly see them. The other issue is I have two dogs of my own who get riled up when they see other dogs in their yard. I'm also 38 weeks pregnant and want to make sure I feel safe in my new home as we're about to welcome our new baby. So, would I be the jerk if I blocked off the access point on my land that has a trail that leads through our yard for locals to get to other trails in the back? If it's your land and you have every right to put a fence up or a gate or whatever way to block it off, 100% in your right and honestly more than understandable. You shouldn't have to feel pressure into allowing pretty much strangers with animals to willingly trespass on your property. Not to mention the four-wheelers, I mean, if they get only even a slightly inconsiderate, I mean, you're gonna have ruined grass and mud trails all over the place. Let's say all these four-wheelers create a little bit of a dip in the ground somewhere, and they ride over that, bump bump, it was done on your land, you might be liable for something. Our next story is, am I the jerk for having a dry wedding and not advertising it? Also yelling at in-laws since they demanded it. I got married about a month ago and we were able to go on a three week honeymoon in Europe. So this was my first week back at work. This was possible because my wife's family paid for the whole wedding. So we were able to use what my parents planned to contribute for the honeymoon and then combine all that we had saved with all the gift money as a down payment on a house. The only catch is that my wife's family are from an anti-alcohol religion and not only said that they would only pay for a dry wedding, but would only even come to New York from Utah for that. My wife was leaving the religion as we met in college and is fully out now. To their credit, the parents haven't excommunicated her, but whenever we're out there to visit, we fully have to play the part. No drinking, no cursing, church on Sunday, and I sleep on the couch. I'm not a raging drinker and I didn't want to get wasted at my wedding anyway. Plus, my parents got them to at least allow champagne for toasts. My parents paid for that. We didn't feel it necessary to mention this on the invites, but apparently having an alcohol-free wedding in New York requires notification. Reception was at the same place as the ceremony, so as the bride and I were about to enter, we were in the hallway and I see my coworker and her husband making for an exit, and we ask where they're going as we're about to enter. Coworker was at a loss of words, but the husband straight up said, heading out. Kinda in bad taste not to mention a wedding is dry on the invite. Now, we didn't particularly care these two were leaving, but my wife was worried it was a sign of things to come. She was right, and not only was more than half the wedding gone before cake, but other people expressed their displeasure as well. So there's two conflicts. First, my father-in-law made a comment about how disrespectful everyone leaving was, and that my friends and family reflect poorly on me. I snapped and said it was because of the cult BS I agreed to follow and that he should know going forward that my wife and I will not be conforming to any of his standards. And if he wants to keep seeing us, expect me to drink and speak the way I actually do in real life and never even attempt to ask me about church. He said I'm way out of line since he can't curse and stormed off. Secondly, when I returned to work, I told the first co-worker her husband was extremely rude and I didn't want to remain friends outside work. Another co-worker who stayed longer at the wedding jumped in to take her side, saying it was crappy I didn't mention it being a dry wedding, as I knew people would RSVP no and that he definitely would have, even though he agreed the husband shouldn't have been so blunt. 
I told him that we can be strictly work moving forward as well. Am I the jerk for all of this? I think it goes without saying that pretty much everybody would have liked to see OP put their foot down a long time ago. Honestly, I'm not much of a drinker myself, so I don't understand all of these people who just like file one by one out when finding out it's a dry wedding. Like I'm sorry, but do people go to the wedding specifically for the drinks? At the end of the day though, they did offer to pay and OP accepted that money on the basis that they agreed to those terms. OP not liking how it turned out in the end because of those terms is kind of tough luck a little bit. But at the same time, I also think the in-laws are jerks because they shouldn't have tried to force their beliefs on this whole wedding. I think literally everybody here has their own blame in their own different ways. Our next story is, am I the jerk for not punishing my middle child for screaming at my eldest and kicking her out of the house? I have three children, Ava, 25-year-old female, Kendall, 16-year-old female, and Darren, 13-year-old male. Kendall was diagnosed with bipolar disorder late last year. She has extreme anxiety and somewhat of a short fuse. She's in therapy and, according to her, is talking to her therapist about what happened in this incident. My other two kids had the tendency to try to bait her and get her to freak out because they think it's funny. We've spoken to them several times. My son's been punished, etc. It got better with a diagnosis and I thought it finally gave my other two kids the push and realization that this isn't funny and typical sibling stuff. Ava moved out after college but lives nearby and will visit often. This week, the teenagers had a day off due to staff development. Kendall is the type to sleep in if she has nothing else going on. Both her siblings know this. I also know she got very little sleep the night before as she anticipated the day off. Anyway, I leave for work just as Ava is coming in. She didn't say she was stopping by, so it was a welcome surprise. I tell her Darren's playing video games, Kendall's sleeping. She said cool and went to join her brother. An hour later, I get a call from Ava and she's pissed. She says that Kendall screamed at her to get the freak out of her house and wouldn't stop until Ava actually left. I called Kendall. She told me that Ava and Darren came into her room, laughing and shaking her until she woke up and then left the room. She tried to go back to sleep but couldn't. Kendall was exhausted and had a rough week. She ran downstairs and asked what the heck was wrong with them. They kept laughing and told her to calm down. That's when Kendall screamed at Ava to get out of the house. I told Kendall while of course screaming isn't the best way, I understood why she did it and she wasn't in trouble. I texted Ava and said we'd speak that night as I did have to work. I went home afterwards and grounded Darren, taking away his Xbox. He then tried to say it was unfair of Kendall to throw Ava out as he wanted her there. I asked why they would do this and they said they wanted Kendall to come to breakfast with them. I told them I didn't buy that and accused them of just trying to get a rise out of her. He finally owned up to it. I then went to Ava's. She said it was a little of both. They wanted to mess with her and thought they'd just get a little upset. She also did genuinely want to buy her breakfast. I said there were so many ways to go about the latter and the former is bull. Eva tried to say it's unfair that she and Darren can't treat her like normal siblings do because she could fly off the handle. She pointed out that I always said my home was hers. I said yeah, but Kendall lives there and she has a right to feel safe. It's not like she tried to kick out Darren. My husband backs me up, but Darren and Ava are still pissed. Ava thinks it's fair for Darren to be punished and for her to get a lecture, but that Kendall shouldn't get off scot-free. You're telling me Ava is 25 years old doing this? And she thinks somebody that has a disorder while doing behaviors that trigger said disorder is something worth punishing the disordered person for? Ava needs to grow up a lot. And it seems like that behavior is very much rubbing off on Darren. Our next story is, am I the jerk for making a scene at my sister's wedding, which she spent more than 10000 on, over a joke? My sister, 24-year-old female, got married last week. Her wedding was very well planned out. We received invitations six months before, and my sister poured about $10,000 into this wedding. And that's without catering costs added. She also invited over 100 people. It was an ethnic wedding, so there were some friends of friends. The ceremony was beautiful. There were so many pictures taken. Everyone was having a great time. I dream of eating the food I ate there just once again in my life. Even the rehearsal dinner a week before was magical. The issue came after my sister and her husband said, I do. It was the reception. The cake was cut and everything was great. 
They were laughing and having a good time and then they went back up and said their speeches. Her husband's speech was touching with a humorous twist. When it came time for her to say hers, however, things went south. She started off great, making a few jokes about a few family members, nothing harmful, but then it got to me. She made a joke about considering having a dry wedding because I was such an addict. To clarify, I've struggled with an alcohol addiction and she is well aware. She was never really supportive of my recovery journey because she always saw me as an addict. My sister has this idea that once you struggle with an addiction, you go crazy and lose control if you get the chance again. No matter if you recover or not, in her eyes, you're always an addict. Everyone laughed and I felt humiliated. She was laughing too and then continued. I didn't want to interrupt her, so I just waited. I felt like crying and screaming at the same time. It was a rage yet sadness I'd never experienced before. After her speech, I spoke up. I brought her somewhere private. I told her that I didn't appreciate her joke and that it wasn't funny and that I felt she humiliated me. She got so angry and started yelling things like, I have a whole wedding waiting for me back there. Who do you think you are to bring me here and waste my time? And it's just a joke, don't be so pissy. She accused me of ruining her wedding and started screaming. She laughed back to the ceremony and I just stood there. Once I came back, everyone was staring at me and my sister was sobbing in my dad's arms. My dad proceeded to yell at me, telling me I ruined my sister's wedding and made a scene. I yelled back and when I noticed a lot of people were watching, I got angry and left. Now all my family's mad at me and they won't stop sending me texts telling me I should apologize. I don't want to. Am I the jerk? I completely understand that when you want to go say a speech or you want to say some vows, you want to get a few jokes in there, you want to make it lighthearted and fun, but it has to be that, lighthearted and fun. You can't just casually mention that somebody has a crushing addiction or has had a crushing addiction and poke fun at that and assume that it's just going to be okay. The twist here is OP went out of their way to privately tell them that they didn't like that joke. So what did she do? She turned around and made it public. It wasn't OP's fault, OP didn't present it and try to ruin the wedding. Our next story is, am I the jerk for telling my brother that he didn't need to share that his wife was in labor in my wedding? My wedding was days ago. My brother attended, but his wife didn't. She was nearing her due date to give birth and she didn't come. The wedding was going well till my brother received a call from his mother-in-law telling him that sister-in-law was in labor. He told me he was leaving and my wife and I were fine with that. But the issue began after he told one of the guests that sister-in-law was in labor. Word spread out and suddenly everybody was talking about it, which disrupted the event. Even my parents started calling and there was a huge fuss, which frankly was unnecessary if my brother just left in silence or made up some excuse. I contacted him later and expressed my grief and frustration with what he did. I told him how the news of his wife being in labor disrupted the wedding and caused my wife to feel like her day was ruined. He lashed out asking how any of that was his fault. I explained how he should have just left or made up some excuse to leave, but he said he didn't mean any harm and that he was in a hurry and worried at the time. He said it wasn't like he announced it and told me I disrespected him by arguing with him about it. We had a big argument and our parents sided with him and told me to get over myself and are now expecting me to apologize. Honestly, I literally failed to see what the brother could be the jerk about here. It's not like he was running around like, quick guys, my wife's in labor, let's focus on that, let's huddle together and have a group meeting about it. This is a classic case of crap happens. It might not have been the nicest thing to have something correlate with your wedding day that took some of the attention off of it. But like, let's celebrate the life and birth of this baby, rather than try to force this narrative of this baby being born and the attention people gave to them absolutely ruined my big day. I hope they don't hold any resentment towards their niece and or nephew. But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. Now, if you want to hear another absolutely crazy Am I the Jerk here story, check out that video on the left. Or if you missed my latest video, check out that video on the right. That said, I'll see you all next time with some more stories.